Welcome everyone to BizHack Live, our weekly gathering. Every Wednesday, we bring some of the top thought leaders in digital marketing to talk about how you can market yourself as a small business. And uh, I'm very excited today to welcome Dennis Yu, the CEO of Blitz Metrics, an agency, uh, to talk about one of the hottest topics in digital marketing and social media, Clubhouse. Um, and today is going to be a, a conversation. And uh, I'm really excited to talk about a, a little mini case study we're going to do together while we go through that. First, I wanted to, before we get to that, I did want to acknowledge our amazing partners who make BizHack Live possible. Uh, we're sponsored by the American Marketing Association, South Florida Integrated Marketing Association, and Miami Marketers. I strongly recommend you guys who are marketing professionals uh, and interested in growing that you join these organizations. Um, and thank you guys for your support and spreading the word to your members. We also are partnered with Creation Station and CIC, a uh, co-working space here in South Florida. Um, I wanted to take uh, a minute to make a really exciting announcement. So, you know, when you're the creator of a, a company and the owner of a company, you often step away from the day-to-day in the case of BizHack Academy, it's been actually more than a year now since I have led our signature five-week accelerated program. And so much in the world has changed in that year, year and a half since I was uh, leading that class and I just got the itch. And so I'm going to be back uh, April 5th. I will be leading for the first time in more than a year our five-week accelerated program in lead generation for businesses. Uh, I've been working quietly behind the scenes for six months to upgrade and renovate the entire curriculum. So much has changed in the world. The digital marketing platforms have changed. Obviously the world itself has changed with COVID. The one thing that hasn't changed is that BizHack's dedication to creating community coaching and classes that are in the cutting edge and help small businesses market themselves. It's our exclusive narrow focus, and we think we do it better than anyone else out there. And uh, in the last six months, we've developed something called the BizHack Lead Building System. It's been developed, frankly, over seven years with 700 businesses, but we've now given it uh, a name and really systematized the process uh, for how to market yourselves. And I'm excited to lead folks for the first time through the entire lead building system in our upcoming course. If you're interested uh, please go to try.bizhack.com slash scholarship. You can apply there for the course. We do have scholarships available for minority and women-owned businesses uh, to help those small businesses most in need during COVID. Um, and so Lilia will put that link and uh, please apply. We're having an info session tomorrow. If you want to be a part of that info session, just go ahead and put your application in and we'll invite you to that info session. It's, a, it's, a, it's an intimate and small group info session. Now I wanted to take a minute and welcome Dennis Yu of Blitz Metrics. You're a longtime friend of Safima uh, and you've spoken uh, with many of the South Florida Integrated Marketing Association events. And I wanted to take a minute and talk about what we're gonna cover today. Uh, first of all, we're gonna talk about how do you build a community in Clubhouse for coaches, trainers, and thought leaders? How do you drive attendance to your virtual events? How do you curate content for content creators? How do you collaborate on projects and join networks? How do you grow your podcast community? How do you network with experts in other industries? And very importantly, if you run an agency, how do you recommend your clients use Clubhouse? That's tremendously important. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of agency folks here today, Dennis, so we'll make sure we'll want to talk to that. And you have a wonderful case study here with me. So I'm a <laughs> former NPR journalist. I used to host a radio show. I'm an audio guy. I do educational content. I train. And I am just befuddled by, by what to do on Clubhouse. I, I'm, I'm a lurker right now. Um, and I listen and I'm confused about how to actually leverage this for my, uh, my business. And what I'm really looking to do is expand my reach and ultimately generate people for my training. And uh, I know that Lilia, who runs our community efforts, 
uh, has been like, Dan, you've got to get into Clubhouse. What the heck's wrong with you? Lilia, what is, what is some of the things you've been telling me behind the scenes about Clubhouse? Yeah, like everybody is in Clubhouse right now. So it's something that we need to, to be doing. Like everybody's spending hours and hours every day in Clubhouse. So Yeah. And so the challenge that I have as a business owner, and then we're going to just begin the conversation, is how do I, how can I be strategic about my use of Clubhouse? How can I leverage Clubhouse for the maximum ROI or mm -hmm. RO time, ROT, mm -hmm. return on my time? Because my fear and why it's, I've been held back and why I've been resisting Lily and why I invited you to speak, my fear is that if I invest more time into yet another channel, I'm going to spread myself even thinner and I'm not going to necessarily get the results. So anyway, I, I will be injecting my own worries, my concerns, my questions as I think about BizHack and Clubhouse, as you kind of give us all a framework for thinking about Clubhouse for business. And as Lilia said, uh, there's an amazing uh, opportunity now for you guys to talk to one of the leading experts in Clubhouse for business. Put your questions in the Q&A, please. So there's a Q&A button on the bottom. We'll be monitoring it. I will be monitoring it. And we're going to just treat this like a live radio show. And so with that, Dennis, uh, welcome to BizHack Live. And thank you for letting me be your guinea pig. Awesome, Dan. And there's no better way to show how to do Clubhouse than to actually be in Clubhouse. Just like if you've got a personal trainer, then that personal trainer actually knows how to lift weights and all that. So I wanna actually show you how it works. So check this out. First off, I wanna know, are you on Clubhouse? Let me know in the, in the comments, are you on Clubhouse? And I did a search for Dan and I see the first one is a London-based music producer. You can see in their bio there, right? And if you're there, come join us in Clubhouse because we're gonna do a live in just a minute. And I see our actual Dan here in number two and I see these other people Look at, none of these people have anything in their profile except the very first one. Want to see my profile? Check this out. We go to the, this is called the hallway, which is the news feed, basically, if you will. And you can see there's a number of these rooms here. Wow, there's a big room right now. And it's called Social Media Masterclass, Instagram, TikTok, and all that. And there's a bunch of friends of mine that are speaking. They're at the very top. So the more... The, the closer they are to me and the more powerful they are, then the more likely they're going to be showing at the top and they have a little comment box next to them, meaning they're a speaker. So there's a lot of speakers here. You can see. Wow. And this room here has 1000 people. It says 1k and there's 43 speakers and it's inside oh. a club. Go ahead. Yeah. So let's take a step back. Some people haven't yet gotten invited into clubhouse. Some people have never been on the app. Um, let me do a, a quick kind of layman's attempt to describe what Clubhouse is. So it's an audio only social media platform. My understanding is that these live conversations are not recorded or archived in any way. And it's like a way for you to basically chat around topics of interest with people you know and people you don't know. And the, there are two kind of units within Clubhouse. There are the rooms themselves and then the clubs that host the room. And my understanding is that you need to be, um, you know, have a certain level of activity in order to be able to host a club, but um, you can then join other people's rooms. So if you could clarify yep. just some of the terminology and then uh, yep. please continue. Yep, you're a step ahead of me. <laughs> so I just wanted to, to I have a, a particular way I want to show people how Clubhouse works. So it's true. Clubhouse is an audio only, currently only on iOS app. So if you don't have an iPhone right now or an iPad, you're not going to get there for a little bit. And just like any other social network, you have a profile. And you can see here, my profile here in the top right with the orange head is one that people can see because among, as I'll show you in a minute why that's important, you want to have a proper profile. And the first three lines is called your short profile. And that's important because that's what people see when they're looking at you when you're speaking. And then you can see the full profile, which goes on for miles if you want to say all kinds of things about you. You get two links, one to your Twitter and to your Instagram. Although you can type in links to your website, to your lead magnets, to your courses, to your programs, to whatever it is that you have. 
The only two actual links are your Twitter and Instagram. Most of the conversation that will occur on Clubhouse is going to be through your Instagram. So make sure you have your Instagram set up properly so that people understand who you are. We're not going, we're going to go into a ton of detail about how you optimize a profile, but just know that those first three lines, you need to show why you are interesting. So don't go on and on about your LinkedIn. You want to use things that are, say things in just three lines. So I said that I built the analytics at Yahoo and I spent a billion dollars on Facebook ads. So people see that they're going to think, oh, okay, maybe this guy's worth talking about. The other way to think about your profile is what is it that I have as my strategic give and what is my strategic ask? My strategic give is how do I provide value, which is the number one thing inside Clubhouse. You're not there to promote. You're not there to say this is your job title, which is what people put on LinkedIn. But what is what question can you answer? What connections can you provide? What is it that you do? How do you help people? And if you're very clear on exactly who you serve, so if you're a coach, consultant, speaker, all this that, that Dan mentioned, you could be in Miami, you could be anywhere, but who exactly do you serve and what do you do for those people? Another way to reframe that is the X, Y, Z. I help X achieve Y via Z, right? So I could say for myself, I help young adults get certified as digital marketers via, via our certified digital marketing training program, right? And think about what your XYZ is. If you don't have that, you're going to find Clubhouse to be a waste of time. You're gonna say, oh, I'm wandering around and I'm meeting a lot of cool people, but I'm not really sure if I'm getting value here. Well, because you haven't clarified exactly who you are, which will then clarify the rooms that you wanna be in, the clubs that you wanna be a part of, the people that you're going to connect. So you really have to think strategically before you get in the clubhouse. Otherwise you'll just end up wandering around, which is what most people do. Then your strategic ask is what is it that you want? Do you want people, to, uh, right now we're hiring people. So I'm always talking about how we're hiring account managers. So I'm also creating rooms that will be, hey, uh, I'm hiring an account manager, come in and interview and people will come in as you'll see in a second. So always think about the balance on the give and the ask. And you probably want to think 80, 90% of the time on what it is that you give. Okay. So do that and you'll be ahead of 99% of other people in clubhouse. Now you'll see below, I've got 13,000 followers. Hey, can I pause for a sec? Yeah. First of all, I just want to underline what we're trying to do here for you guys is we're trying to take your FOMO, which is, oh my God, Clubhouse, ah, what do I do? And turn it into strategy. And so the first thing that Dennis said is know your audience and know what value you're providing to your audience and use that as a filter for yeah. what conversation you begin. But I wanted to take dig in for a sec on what you called your strategic ask. Mm -hmm. Because I think that this is the the way you convert awareness to drive deeper in the funnel towards lead generation and yeah, value yeah. yeah and what was really interesting to me is you run an agency you're looking for clients but your strategic ask on clubhouse is for employees yeah for, so can you just and and i, I know you have like a, an order if you're going to go deeper into strategic ask later great yeah. but if we, if you're not i would like to pause for a minute and here you're thinking about what is a good strategic ask for Clubhouse. We, we could talk about it here and use the entire time just talking about Clubhouse, but we're now cutting into some, I, I think we should do the Clubhouse room, watch me demonstrate how to do it, and then this will answer the questions and this will create more questions for you. I love it, go we for it. We could talk about lifting weights, we could talk about PPC, we could talk about any of these things, but there's nothing more powerful than we demonstrate it. So right yeah, now- one of our, one of our, of our core values, values is, one of our core values is learn by doing. So teach us. There's a lot of people that want to give you general advice on what they heard about how to do something. There's weight, literally, there are weight loss coaches that are obese trying to give advice on how to lose weight. And I said, sorry, you don't qualify, right? <laughs> no offense. If you're going to show people how to use Clubhouse, if you're going to give advice, you better be a practitioner. Otherwise, you're a hypocrite. And that's what I want to show you in a minute. So I just want to cover a couple general things and we're going to lump, uh, launch in and show you some things. Okay. So I was talking about followers and following, just like any other social network. It doesn't really matter that much how many followers you have. What matters is the quality of the followers. The most recent followers, I'm going to click on this. The ones at the top are the people who have just followed you. 
which you'll also see inside your activity feed. Now, most of these people, as you start to become more popular, if I click on these people to see who they are, I see their bio. Same kind of thing. They're using emojis. They're, they've got the short and long bio. And if I look, usually within the first three or four, here we go. You have these people who are new and they don't have anything in their bio. And they'll often have a lot of people they're following and not many followers. And if I see who they're following, check that out. You see those blues? That means these people are also following people that follow me. And so these people are brand new to Clubhouse. She just joined a few days ago. And we'll see other people like this one. She just joined, right? You can see at the bottom when she's joined. And you can see she's got 62 people she's following and only 10 followers. But why do you think that is? How, how is it that she's following me? I don't know who she is. And then when you look at people, okay, she's joined a bunch of clubs. That's at the top. Then look at all these other people that are friends of mine. I can see them that are there. Look, there's Bomani, who is, who is the face of Clubhouse, this guy right here. There's, let's see, these other people that, that I can mention. Ben Horowitz, right, of Andreessen Horowitz. Tiffany Haddish, who's probably the biggest one on the Clubhouse, except for the founders. And other people, there's Paul Davidson, he's founder. And Rohan Seth, founder. So why is it that that I'm, you know, Josh Constein, he's a friend of mine. He writes for some of the big tech magazines. Well, so why is it that, that these people are in common with me? It's because I'm in the recommended user list. So Clubhouse is listening, no pun intended, to who's following who, to who is speaking together in these different rooms. And it's a collaborative filter, just like on Amazon, people who bought this also bought these other products, right? Netflix, if you like this show, you might also want to watch this other show. Or Facebook, if your friends are liking such and such, you probably also like such and such. Or if you click on Donald Trump, you're going to get more Donald Trump stuff. That's how the algorithm works. So you need to be strategic about the rooms that you join and who you engage with because that's going to drive the recommended user list. So it does create a filter bubble, okay? Now I'm going to go back to the home screen, which is the, the list of all these different rooms. Some people call it the hallway. And I'll see that there's a bunch of rooms that are inside clubs. And the clubs are the little blue house thing at the top. So you can see this room is called Validating, Launching, and Rapid Growth Business Hacks. And it's under this, you see that greenhouse? The Product Launch Blueprint Club. So rooms are inside of clubs. The power is going to be inside the club. Right now, that's not the case because clubs are brand new. Only a week ago could you start to launch your own clubs. But you'll see a lot of these rooms like this one here. Instagram versus LinkedIn. That's the room and it's inside the, the clubhouse or what is it? The Entrepreneur Millionaire Secrets Club. And I can see a lot of friends here, Gary Henderson, John Lee, and 757 people in this room, 18 speakers. That's about the right balance. If you have too many speakers, the room gets out of control. If you have only a couple of speakers, then you don't have enough energy and you might not be able to answer people's questions based on like a panel level Q and A because the most common format is Q and A. So I'm going to click on this to go into the room. So now I'm in the room. Look at all the people that are here. I can scroll through all these people that are here. The speakers are at the top. The moderators have the green dot next to them. See that? The order of the people in this room is based on when they joined and their status. Moderators are first. So the first moderator is John, and then these other people. Then you have other speakers. So you can see below, they don't have green dots by them, but they're still speakers. The person with the gray around them is speaking and their mic is off. You see how everyone else is muted? Now, I have people who are followed by the speakers, which is the next tier. Then after that, I have all the people that are in the room where it says others in the room. See this? And then there's everyone else. And because I'm just a listener in the room, I can only raise my hand or I can ping other people into the room with the plus, or I can leave quietly, see? So I can't speak. I don't have a mute, unmute, because I'm not a speaker. The only people who can speak are those who are at the top, which is what we call being on stage, right? And now if I raise my hand, I'm not gonna do it because this is not the right time. I will probably get invited to speak because these other people here on stage as moderators are good friends of mine. Yeah, so 
Now, how do I tell how many people are in my room when I'm in the room? I hit all rooms and I go back to the hallway and it shows me down here, there's a thousand people in the room, right? Well, now there's only 800 people in the room. The room counts can go up and down. Usually when someone big comes into a room, that's when you're going to, you know, I'm going to leave quietly. By the way, I'm still in the room and I can still browse around. The only way to leave that room is to hit leave room or to join another room. So I can browse around. I can be on the treadmill. I can do whatever it is while I'm still listening. That's how Clubhouse is designed for engagement. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to the room. I'm going to leave quietly. Okay. Now that's that's how rooms work. And a quick small note is you notice that there is some like talking in the background. That's the Clubhouse. That's the panel discussion. Someone thought there was some feedback going on, but that's actually you listening in on this conversation. And I can mute out too if I'm a listener so that there's no sound. But if I'm a speaker... I can't turn the volume down all the way, which I thought was a clever thing that the Clubhouse founders did. Just like in any other social network, you have notifications. So you can see the bell at the top. I've got a couple of notifications. It's probably gonna be invites. Yeah, people are inviting me to things. Hey, you know, or moderate this club. I'll do this later. Fiona Lucas asked me to join this particular club. I don't know if I wanna do that or not. So I'm just gonna click on it and see what about this club? Who's in it? What's it about? Am I interested in this? Mm. Oh, by the way, the person in a club, so now I'm looking at a club, right? You see, that's a club. And the people who are here at the top are, the, are called the founders. Usually it's one or two. Sometimes there's three or four, but usually it's one or two. And then there's all the other people that are members and you can also be a follower. Now notice it only shows me the number of members here. It doesn't show me how many followers there are. That's important because it tells you something about the power of the room or sorry, the power of the club and whether you wanna be a part of it. Now let's say that I wanna start a room, two ways to start a room. I could hit this button right now and start the room, the green button, or I can schedule a room where I can go to the calendar and it starts with upcoming for you, which are things that they recommend to you based on what you've been doing. And then I can also, it also shows me like my rooms. So I've got a room coming up at 2 p.m. so you can see you know, now these are my rooms. This is where my orange head is there. And this is, you can think of this as the calendar. By the way, you, typically you don't schedule rooms like you schedule webinars, like we're scheduling this biz hack. It's just right now Clubhouse is so new, people just kind of show up and you'll see in a minute how powerful that is. Now here in the upcoming for you, you know, events section, I can click here plus and I can schedule a new room which is an, an event, you know, a, a room inside a club. And I can say that it, I can add Dan as a co-host if we are friends, but I don't think we are. I don't think he follows me, so I can't add him yet, but I can add other people. So you gotta follow me, date time. And then I can put it under a host club. And these are all the clubs I'm allowed to host under. You see there, host club. I don't want to go too far into this, but this is going to be really key. If you want to grow your audience as a coach, speaker, or whatnot, you need to put it under a big club and a big club based on the number of followers that it has. Now I'm going to go back and show you where the power is. Now I'm in here. I'm in inside the hallway, right? We were here before. Watch this. I'm swiping left. Almost nobody knows about this for some reason. And now it's showing me all the active clubs and it's showing me who else is online. I don't really care that much about who's online because I don't want to bother them if they're in these other rooms or whatnot, but I'm going to now click show all and inside these active clubs, it's showing me how many people are active right now. So this group, Facebook marketing secrets, you can see there's 123 members active right now. That means when I launch a room, those 123 people are going to get a notification and probably half of them will join me as you'll see in a second. And here's these other ones, YouTube marketing secrets. There you go. There's, there's a big one here. What does it take to run a million dollar business, right? And there's a thousand people right now in that club because I think there's like 300,000 people overall. Now, if I look at these clubs, let's say this one, Facebook marketing secrets. Now I'm an admin. As an admin, I get way more power. Let me show you. This is one of the largest clubs on Clubhouse. I'm an admin on, well, Founder, I guess is the term for admin. Now you see how it shows how many followers I have? 
So you can see I've got 79,000 followers and I'm right here at the top as a founder because I know something about Facebook ads or people believe I do. There's a full profile here. Now look what happens in the options. Because I'm an admin, there's all these things I can do with the club. If I go to another club that I'm just a member, I can't do that. So if I do this, what does it take to run a million dollar business club? I can start a room in this club, but I'm not a founder. So as a member, I can start a room, but it's a locked room to just that club. And then look at the options I have. I really don't have many options, right? Okay, now I'm gonna do a club and we're gonna, sorry, not a club. I'm gonna do a room just so you can see what this looks like. And who, who's on Clubhouse? Are you guys ready? Follow me. I'm the orange head. And if you wanna do a search for me, by the way, you see there's a search in the top left. Hit that search and do a search for digital, D-I-G-I, -I, oops, spell digital. And you'll see that I'm ranking, well, right now, number four in digital. See that? I just typed in digital because your name is, my handle is digital CEO. You can still search for Dennis Yu and you'll see me there. It's kind of cool, isn't it? Okay. Now, so it's important to choose the right name and all that. All right, now we're going to go back to the hallway here. I'm going to start a room and I'm going to put it under the Facebook Marketing Secrets Club. So I'm known for Facebook marketing. So that's why I know I can do this room and people will follow me. And when I start a room just like this, all I do is I add a topic in the club and I go. And when I schedule, I can do a lot more. When I do the topic, I wanna use emojis in there. So I'm gonna do a couple emojis to start. And what's our topic gonna to be? Mm, how about, what do you think, Dan? Advice for small businesses on Clubhouse? Getting I love started. it. Yep. Getting started on Clubhouse. And because technically this is being recorded, I'm gonna put in recording and as a double, the little recording symbol, R-E-C, R-E-C. Oops, I didn't do this right. R-E-C, and then the little dot, the red, the red dot to show that it's recording. And by the way, I know a lot of people, they do their various, you know, Zooms or whatever, and they will do them both at the same time. So, okay. Oops. Takes a second just to set this thing up. Okay, there it is. Set the topic. And now I'm gonna hit let's go. Now we're live inside a room. It's just me. It's my head talking. I'm not on mute. And we see some friends that have popped in. Hey, Lisa. Hey guys, Tanya, Aisha. Oh, some people are coming and going. It's a locked room in the top. So I wanna let anyone in. So now we're letting people into the room and it's open to everybody. I get these alerts, these green alerts are constantly showing up in the top here. And now look, we got a bunch of friends here. Hey guys, how you doing? Hey Brad, how are you doing? Dimitri, my, my buddy Dimitri has a really cool app called Koji. And I'm so excited you guys are all here. I'm showing my friends here, BizHack Live, how Clubhouse is working. And Dimitri just did, raised his hand to, to be a speaker. So I put him up and if you have a question or if you have a particular piece of advice real quick, like one sentence for our friends here, Biz, BizHack, you can see, hey, Dimitri, he's now a speaker. See that? How are you doing, Dimitri? Hey guys, I'm doing great. I'm actually out for a brisk walk and saw you hosting a room and whenever you host the room, I I get excited about Clubhouse. Yeah. You know, you... I'm not sure if I'll be able to help. I'll mostly be quiet, but if I can, I'll try to try to drop some nuggets. I'm glad you're here. And there's 192 of us here right now. Isn't that really cool? The power of Clubhouse that we just spun up this room and all of a sudden we have all these other people. There's Mr. Dan. See, now Dan is in here. We have 100, 181 people in the room, three speakers. If you don't know how to tell, click on all rooms. So when you join the stage, you wanna, you wanna mute yourself. Uh-oh, 
I think Mr. Dan, we should we should mute. Uh, you should mute your one of your things, or just just in general, put your thing on mute. Yeah, you see how important it is to be on mute. That's like the big sin in Clubhouse. Oh, Darren has something to say. All right, so uh, let's see who we have in the. We have a bunch of friends here in the audience. Mr. Darren, ha welcome. I've seen you in a bunch of rooms here. How you guys doing? Good, good. What advice do you oh have, Mr. Darren? Goodness. This is absolutely incredible. Yes, yes. I was waiting for you to do a room of tennis. <laughs> <laughs> All right, give, give our friends a, a, a value drop, Mr. Darren. A value drop? Oh, that's, that's, that's easy. Now, first of all, is it a value drop in relation? To real, real quick. So one, one sentence, Darren, so not, not a speech. How does, how does a small uh -huh. business or coach find value on Clubhouse? Obviously, the first thing is by giving value on, co on Clubhouse across several rooms. Also, by being very specific and niche in the value they give. So that's why I was trying to ask you, Dennis, was this value in regards to Facebook marketing, specifically niche, or, you know, in, in relation to bringing to Clubhouse, or was it Clubhouse by itself? Clubhouse so by itself. My so, in the second sentence yep. is so Clubhouse we're... by itself. You're going to get very niche. So if your specialty, for instance, with me, is artists and creative entrepreneurs, then I'm going to have specific things for them, like monetization, branding, and marketing strategies versus just doing everything for everybody. The worst thing yeah. you can do on Clubhouse is come with your company and be in the everyone business. That's right. In this case, we've got coaches and consultants and people who are members of Safima and are part of the BizHack Academy, which is a digital marketing training academy that started my buddy Dan, who's next to me. And Mr. Dan's so important, I'm going to make him a moderator. So I clicked on his profile. I clicked make moderator. Now he's got the green dot that's next to him. And because this room is a short pop-up room for a moment, we're going to take people's comments. Your one sentence, not a whole speech on advice you have for coaches, consultants, and small business that are getting started on Clubhouse, which is what the room title is, as you can see. Now, we have 216 people in this room. Isn't that awesome? All you guys here, I am so grateful you guys are here. Now, what I want you to do is raise your hand, which is in the bottom center, that little hand raise button. And I'm going to bring you on stage. When you come on stage, I want you to mute out. And then I'm going to call you up and introduce you. And we'll go through as many people as we can. I'm letting you guys up on stage now. Isn't that cool? Michelle, Serena, Dr. Deborah Harris, Muhammad. Wow, a lot of you guys here. Love letting you guys on and looking at your profiles. So I'm clicking the invite speaker here to let you guys up. All right, let's go through these rapid fire. So welcome, Serena Andrus. My ethos is to cultivate purpose and passion at work. Awesome, awesome. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm also in the BizHack um, online video. Look at you. So. <laughs> awesome. I'm loving it. <laughs> My one piece of advice for anybody joining now is to create your community. Go out there, find the people that yeah. are linked to the same thing that you are, and start networking. That's right. Provide value, start networking. Fantastic. Next up, we have Dr. Deborah Harris. I love working with doctors. And she is the How to Love Innovator, author, psychotherapist, relationship expert. Welcome, Dr. Deborah. Thank you. I'm a total newbie to all of this, but my sister told me that this is a this is a platform that I need to be on with the kind of work that I do. So I'm hoping I learned something that helped me grow my club. Thank you for having me. That's exactly what you need to do. And if you're not speaking, you want to be on mute. Otherwise, there's going to be background noise. So it's absolutely okay if you're out walking around like Dimitri is, but you want to mute yourself if you're not talking. Next up. We have Mohammed, who is helping businesses turn $1 into $5 through ads. And he's a digital marketing manager. Welcome, Mohammed. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you for having me. What tip do you have or encouragement? So uh, for any small business, it's just to start posting content and leveraging. Uh, if they sell a product or a service, to start doing TikTok videos. Um, because they can put free traffic to their website or any landing page that they may have to start leveraging and using TikTok. Fantastic. Love that, Mohammed. Yeah, TikTok is absolutely taken off. And now we have Ray, 
who's one of my buddies. He runs a barbecue festival, is also a killer digital marketing. I've known him for years in the real world. Welcome, Mr. Ray. How are you doing? Great, Dennis. Finally, I'm, I'm very new to this. I just got on a little while ago. Only the second time I've ever been on stage. Awesome to finally be in one of your rooms and uh, come along long way since I met you in Toronto in 2011. Yeah, that is very cool. We need to get together for some barbecue at some point. And now we have, if I'm saying the name right, Anne-Marie. How you doing, Anne-Marie? Doing well. How are you? Good. What tip do you have? I just want to thank Dan, actually, for putting this webinar on today. I think Clubhouse is really uh, a great networking tool and really appreciate um, Dan and all his efforts getting uh, you to uh, demonstrate the uh, new platform to us. So thank you. Yeah, live demonstrations. By the way, if you like what you're hearing, take a screenshot and share that on Twitter. So Anne Marie is speaking. I'm clicking on her profile. I'm scrolling down to the bottom. She has her Twitter and Instagram. There you go. Very good. And I'm tweeting at her with a picture because I think that she's awesome. The screenshot of what we just had. And now, Anne-Marie, you get a blue check mark tweeting you that you're participating on Clubhouse. So if you like Excellent. what you're seeing, then follow whoever is, is saying things that are interesting. If you follow me or follow Dan or Dimitri, you'll be able to join us in other rooms that we're speaking in. If you don't follow, you can't join in those rooms. So that is actually a key strategy is to follow the right people. Otherwise, you cannot see those rooms. They will not show up in your hallway. It's just like being on Facebook. If you don't follow people, you'll have nothing in your newsfeed. And also, if you are interested in Facebook marketing secrets, you see that club at the very top, the greenhouse, become a member of the club. It's free right now. Eventually, we're going to charge for that. But right now, you can join for free. And there's 77,000 of us here in this club, which is, I think, probably how you guys came in. And I'm so excited that we have so many of us here. I would normally take Q&A where people would come and ask their question on entrepreneurship or Facebook ads, and we would bring up other panelists, sometimes invite people. But really, we just want to demonstrate to our friends at BizHack, of which a few people are in our Zoom and a few people are here inside Clubhouse, how this whole thing works. We're going to take two more. Michelle Fibkins, welcome. How are you doing? And you want to unmute yourself? Oh, I think she took off. And we have last, Amy Williams. Amy, hey, how you doing? Good, how are you? I'm so happy to see you. Miss Amy has seen the good, the bad, and the ugly in a seven-figure business. I want to hear the ugly. The really ugly is not trusting my gut and making a bad hiring decision in 2013. Mm. That, that literally almost tanked our business. I'm going to write a book about it. Oh, my it's goodness. It's going to be called dollar lesson. <laughs> it's either a lesson or a blessing, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> okay. Now we normally would reset this room at this point because we're a few minutes in and we would say, Hey, you're in the advice for small businesses getting on clubhouse room. We are recording it because we are teaching this for people that want to get on clubhouse. It's like coaches, coaching coaches on how to coach. And it's part of the Facebook marketing secrets room. If you are new, welcome. And I see a bunch of folks with party hats. Party hats means that you have like uh, Regis and Molly and Oguzan and Emily. You got party hats. That means you've been on Clubhouse less than a week. Welcome. You should definitely join our Facebook Marketing Secrets Club, which you have at the very top because we're doing regular rooms, answering your questions on a variety of topics. I use these rooms to be able to hire people, for example. I use them to interview friends. Often I'll set up a room on topics I know nothing about just so that I can ask these other people questions for the benefit of our audience and largely for myself. I see Mr. Tristan Bailey's here. Tristan, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks. Hello from the UK. Hello from the UK. He is the Cliff Notes podcast host. So yeah, a word of advice. What, give us a... And, uh, on that. Fantastic. One piece of advice you have for us, Tristan. Uh, what's a, your small business advice? Ooh, um, the small business, the, the, the first release I had in, in running a business of being scared of charging more was when I first 
offered them more people. Clients tended to be much happier paying more money when they knew there were more people working on the project. Yeah, definitely. A lot of people have the imposter syndrome where they're, they're afraid of charging more. But oftentimes by doubling your price, you get better clients, even if you don't double your service. So it's a good filter. Okay. This was our pop-up room. I'm so glad that you guys are here. Follow anyone so you can continue the conversation, not just following on Clubhouse, but send a message on Instagram, send a message on Twitter. We're going to do a countdown and then end the room. So I want all the speakers on stage to unmute and we're going to count down together. You ready? Five, four, three, two, one. All right. Goodbye, everybody. So awesome. I'm hitting the end room and you guys are out. Thank you. Okay. Nice. What did you learn about having 200 some people in a room just like that? Well, um, can I make a couple observations about what I saw about how you moderated? Um, so, you know, as a former radio guy, a uh, couple things. Number one, uh, Dennis did a great job of kind of coaching the panelists to make sure that they were short and to the point. You know, one of those guys wanted to talk about his dog or whatever. And, you know, you were like, give me, you know, very quickly a tip. So the, the, the purpose of the room was really clear. It was tips. Um, you also did a really nice job of repeating back what they said and adding a little bit of insight, like the point about doubling your prices. I thought that was, yeah. and, and frankly, your input was more insightful than the original comment, <laughs> but, but that's a good moderating technique. Um, I love how you uh, reminded people, hey, guys, we're in this room. It's about this topic. You know, that kind of that reset, you called it. Um, you know, they, in radio, they do that every 15 minutes. It's called a post. And you just want to make sure, you know, hi, I'm Terry Gross and I'm interviewing X, Y, Z. Yeah. And then, um, you know, you were very playful, uh, you know, bringing people in. Obviously, a lot of people really like you. And, um, and then, um, you know, I, I guess, um, do you always count down at the end or was that just like a little fun? Oh, I, we do all sorts of fun ways to do that. Often I'll end, if there's a few speakers, we'll just do a lightning round, say, give one tip of encouragement and people will go sentence, sentence, sentence. There's so many ways to end the room. You can really be creative. And I don't think there's a particular format that's winning because all of us are still learning how to use Clubhouse. Wonderful. All right. So now we've seen Clubhouse in action and I loved what you just did. Uh, and uh, um, now uh, we're getting a lot of questions about, uh, okay, now I understand what Clubhouse is. I've seen it in action. I yeah. see how large and quick I can assemble, a you know, yeah. All the promotion, all the work we did to get more than 100 people here, you know, in, in seconds, you got more than 100 uh, in yeah. your room. So now what? <laughs> well, when you get people into a room, that's the first part. And then the second part is creating value so that you can build a relationship. So let's cover those first two parts. So Tom Hawkins was with us, and I saw he just said one minute ago, Dennis is the best moderator in Clubhouse. Thank you, Tom. Can I quote you on that? Give me a yes, right? And if you guys thought that, that was awesome, give me a yes here in the chat. If you didn't think it was awesome, tell me no and tell me why. That's okay. My feelings aren't hurt. Because the, the first thing is you got to bring people in the room and they come into the room because they know who you are, because you have common friends, because you've provided value in another room. And maybe I go to that one of these other rooms and I ask an intelligent question. The best way to get people to follow you in a room where you they don't know who you are. So I have a pretty big following now. So I can just spin up a room and lots of people will come in. But let's say I'm new to Clubhouse. Then I start a room and two people show up. That's okay. Or nobody shows up for the first minute or two. That's okay. Because then I can go into other rooms. And if I ask an intelligent question, if I don't speak, 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 like that one guy, I had to cut him off. It's, it's the power question, the insightful, thoughtful question that causes people to say, huh, what is it about Andre? or Michael Pace, you know, or Annette who is there, what, what is it about her that she, she said this one insightful thing, right? So it's not about boasting, it's about asking a question that reflects your knowledge, that then the, the re, especially that reflects knowledge about the topic or the panelists in a way that's not just trying to flex, if that makes sense. So you do that and you invite other mods. So we didn't invite anybody to this one, so if I wanted to create a really high quality room, I'm really going for having the best quality room, meaning the most 
knowledgeable about, uh, knowledgeable people about a particular topic. So I'll ping them on email or messenger or Instagram saying, hey, I'm thinking about doing a room tomorrow at 2 p.m. on how do you, you know, Apple's iOS 14 updates and what we need to do to prepare. And I'll get the, the actually the most knowledgeable people, not the ones who have the most followers. Because once people come into the room, I've got to keep them. So did you notice, what did we have, like 230 people in the room, something like that, right? Where you, and I was going back and forth, but also trying to moderate the room. That actually fell down to whatever, like 130, 140, because I didn't have other power moderators in the room and I wasn't dropping really cool bits of information. So people will come into the room, that's easy. Now I gotta keep them. So the average stay on Clubhouse, I wanna say is 12 minutes. But when we have great rooms, we get people in there that will stay for over an hour and they'll just keep staying because a special guest will pop in and I'll interview them. I was in a room two weeks ago I started where Ty Lopez came in and Grant Cardone came in and these other people came in. All of a sudden it shot up to like a couple thousand people inside the room. Can you imagine that if it was this room we had here and all of a sudden Grant Cardone came in and all of a sudden we're at 1500 people in the room. Isn't that kind of cool? And so then when you have all these people in the room, you have to have, you have to be on topic. You'll find that when the room gets bigger, there will be some people that want to try to commandeer the room. So you need to be a strong moderator like Dan. So if I was a radio host, I would probably be a stronger moderator, but I'm resetting the room every 10 to 15 minutes, meaning I'm stating the purpose of the room and what the rules are and what we're about, that kind of thing. And bringing people up, making sure that as I bring them up, I edify them. And what I do is I click on the profiles you see, and I'll read their bio, which just lets, instead of just saying, hey, Rebecca, so glad you're here, or Amy Williams, I like you, or, or you know, I like what you did. I'm, I want to say something a little bit more that hopefully I can align their bio with the topic, or I can elicit, if people are new, and most people, they don't know how to get right to the point, I can, by looking at their bio, say something that will elicit something very specific such as that lady who's the author that helps seven figure businesses and has looked at the good, bad, and the ugly. I thought, all right, give me the ugly, right? So as a moderator, you have to be thinking about the room, keeping it on topic, keeping it moving along. And if you have a big room, what you probably want to do is have a host who's someone like a Dan, and then you have a, a couple moderators who are there managing the room, bringing speakers on and off, turning people on mute when they're talking, when they're you know driving but they didn't they forgot to mute so you have a couple helpers as moderators and then you have the main host but i was doing both at the same time which you can see was kind of ugly right it was okay if you have a small room less than 50 people that's fine if you have a mid-sized room say up to 500 people you really need one or two mods and if you have a large room over a thousand probably need seven or eight mods to help you out because there's so many things occurring on the back channel and there's ridiculous things. Like some people are trying to trick Clubhouse by being on multiple rooms at the same time, which will then kill your, your room. It'll all, half the people will empty on your room for, for reasons we can discuss later. But there's all kinds of weird things about the dynamics of running these clubs as you see. And then notice how when I'm looking at other people, I can mute and unmute myself to be able to talk to you guys. I'm looking at profiles, I'm taking screenshots, so I'm measuring the health of the room. I'm figuring out who else I want to bring in. I'm looking at who's in the audience so I can invite them up, right? I'm looking at when I want to turn hand raising on and off, but there's a lot of these things you're trying to balance at the same time. I hope you guys got a good sense of that. Perfect. So we're getting, um, so one thing I'd like to chat with you about now is um, like thinking about the business purpose of this. Um, so I'll just start by asking you, why are you spending, you know, you're, you're a busy business owner. You're trying to grow your business. You're looking to hire folks. Why are you spending a lot of time on clubhouse? Is it to push your business forward or do you have other reasons for being there? So me personally, I have my, my reasons and you guys can have yours. and can be completely different from mine and it doesn't mean it's good or bad. I want to elevate figureheads on clubhouse. So when people are knowledgeable, we have a system to take that knowledge and turn it into a book and publish that book in all sorts of different formats. We have partnerships with freeebooks.net, which is the largest ebook site out there with 300,000 visitors a day. We publish on Social Media Examiner and Digital Marketer. I've got a blog. I've, I'm an author on a number of other high profile sites that I have to constantly produce great content and great stories. Now, I don't have enough direct experience 
to be able to provide that level of content. So I'm always looking for people that have done something, not just they have an opinion, but they've executed it to the point where it can be one, two, three, four, like a recipe. And if you have that recipe and it's something that other people can follow that recipe to achieve that particular result, I want to elevate you. And Clubhouse is a great way to find author, speakers, and coaches, not just those people who want to talk generically about how you can make a million dollars, but who have actually done something like my buddy, Jeff Bond is a home inspector and he's been inspecting homes for 30 years. He's inspected 14,000 homes. And he's talking about what it is to be a good home inspector and how you grow your business as a home inspector. He's what we call a lighthouse so that he can be a lighthouse a, and a shining example to the thousands of other home inspectors. So I love elevating him and I love being able to promote him to our other business owners. Tommy Mello runs A1 Garage. He has the largest home services business in the United States. He started from nothing. Now he's doing over $50 million and he's hired up a, a bunch of people in his offices all over the US. I love interviewing him. Other people will interview me. Clubhouse is a great interview format. So if you're a coach or an author or speaker, what is your topic? Who are the most knowledgeable people in the industry? It might be you. It might be a couple other people. Use Clubhouse as a great place to interview other people. Can you imagine? So Dan, choose a topic, any topic. Um, let's say the Facebook, uh, the change to Apple iOS uh, re related to Facebook and how that's going to impact your ability to retarget using the pixel. Yeah. So iOS 14, I would probably bring in John Loomer and then uh, Andrea Vall, maybe Michael Stelzner, maybe Michael Sanchez, maybe Mari Smith. There's a few other people I would bring on. I, there's some people I know at Facebook, but they would not want to be publicly talking about this. I know some people who work at Google that can talk about the similar impact for Google Privacy Sandbox, which is Chrome killing all cookies next year, which I think is bigger than the iOS 14 thing. So already I'm thinking about who are the people that are the most knowledgeable on this topic? And I would invite them into a room and schedule it. And then it would be killer because then everyone who follows these people, if they follow John Loomer or Larry Kim, then they probably know who I am. But if they don't, that's okay because when we're all speaking together, their audience, like Mari Smith has a much bigger audience than me. So when her people come in and they, they hear her and I talking about this topic, they're going to think, wow, this dentist guy must be pretty knowledgeable as long as I say something knowledgeable about or say some cool things about iOS 14 and the way, you know, ATT, which is app tracking and transparency on top of the, the IDFA, which is Apple's identifier for advertisers and how those two work together and what the changes are and the prompt that's coming the next month. So maybe I say something interesting about that. Now their audience knows who I am and my audience knows who they are. And it's very tight. It's, it's not promotional. That's the hallmark of a great room on Clubhouse. It's on that topic. It has a few experts and people will follow you, not because you're boasting. By the way, people who boast in a room and self-promote, their, their technique backfires. Be on topic, make sure you're a pro. Most people aren't. So that disqualifies 99% of the other people and your business will thrive. It works so well. My business has grown so much. The connections I've made, as you'll hear from other people, why they love being on Clubhouse. We like to call it crack house because you can spend so much time on it. But to your point, Dan, I'm a busy business person. I don't have a lot of time, but I'm strategically networking because I know what the topic is and I know who the most knowledgeable people are. And then they love to be in my rooms because they know when I spin up a room, we're going to get a few hundred people just like that. And, and it makes uh, them look good. And, we're, and the, because of COVID, you don't have a lot of the, the big conferences going on, right? Absolutely. Or the, you know, after, after hours at the bar. Yeah. Um, and uh, one of the ways you promote the room is by having a lot of followers and it, you know, clubhouse does a really good job organically of kind of messaging out to all your followers and, and the other um, followers of your uh, you know, co-hosts to the moderators and the, yeah. the speakers. And so in that way, it kind of propagates, you don't uh, independently or outside of clubhouse necessarily promote it. You don't yeah. necessarily. And that, that doesn't seem to work. Like you can mail a list, like Larry Kim has a list of 700,000. And so we started up some rooms and he mailed the list and that might've got us another 50 or hundred people into the room. It wasn't really a huge, not that room size is the important thing. Check this out as the arbitrage opportunity. So Dan, you're an accomplished host. You've been on radio. You run this biz hack Academy in a club. You are, you are established and you have a big email list, right? We have a hundred people here in this zoom. So clearly you know what you're doing in terms of growing an audience and training other people on digital marketing and so forth, right?
However, you have almost nothing, no offense, you have almost no footprint on Clubhouse. So someone like me can say, hey, Dan, I know what you care about with helping coaches and authors and speakers grow their business, small businesses, you know, people in Miami that are part of FEMA, digital marketing training. How would you like to do a room together on insert topic? And I know it's going to work because you know what you're talking about with BizHack, and then you probably want to grow your audience on Clubhouse. So all I need to do is facilitate this by hosting a room. I don't even need to have any expertise. I just need to facilitate a room because you want to learn about this platform and you want to grow your audience there. And you have FOMO because other people are there and you want to understand what it's about, right? So what I would do is just invite all the other Dans of the world and do rooms with them. And instead of talking about myself, I would just edify Dan, my friend, Mary Henderson, I did a room with her last night. She does, she's the top personal branding expert on LinkedIn. So she only works with experts who have at least 10,000 hours in their area of expertise. And I have spun up four rooms where all I'm doing is just moderating for her as people come up and ask questions about their LinkedIn profile, their headline, you know, how much they should charge. I'm just there moderating. I'm not talking about myself. And that is creating tremendous value for her, right? Because she's new to Clubhouse, even though on LinkedIn, she's a God basically, right? There are people that are just ridiculously powerful. You have celebrities and entertainers and business people who they're just getting on the clubhouse because it's brand new. And then us by being their guide and helping them and being a moderator, we don't have to be a super moderator ourselves. Like a super mod is someone who's 10,000 followers or more. You don't even have to be that. If you're there to help out, people will appreciate that. You could literally take what you've learned today in, in our Zoom and apply that and help out other people that are still getting on the clubhouse. Does that make sense? Love it. So let me, let me summarize some of what I'm hearing. Um, first of all, kind of approach Clubhouse with a philosophy of abundance, right? Don't go there to get, go there to give. Um, and this sort of early spirit of social media is alive and well in Clubhouse. Mm -hmm. And it's still a pretty, you know, new and mm -hmm. somewhat... There's 10 million people on the platform. There's going to be 100 million by the end of the year. It's brand new. Yeah. You're still early. So, so first of all, go in there thinking more about what you can give than what you can get. Second, um, pick your kind of lane. And then one way to start building following is to organize rooms with experts in that lane. Yeah. And then give them the platform and, and just be behind the scenes, moderating and yeah. generously trying to just get the most out of it. Yeah. You know, manage the room in terms of short answers, you know, in and out. Uh, value, provide value, uh, you know, resetting the room, like do, just do, manage it professionally. Um, and I think that means that you might have, you know, a couple dozen speakers, uh, but you don't want a lot of moderators because it's going to be hard, uh, especially if the room isn't too large, it's going to be yeah. hard for you to keep it under control. Absolutely. And then finally, I think, and this is sort of what we were getting at uh, at the beginning, and I'd love to return to it now. So, we have to be thoughtful about what we ask for, right? And we have to not ask for it too much, you know, give 10 for every one ask. Yeah. But um, it's interesting to me that you're focused on asking for, you know, hires rather than clients, if you will. Right. Um, and my guess is because that's an ask that yes. feels a little more generous. Yes, yes. Absolutely, amen. I'm so glad to spend time with you, Dan, and everyone else here. I've got to run off to actually another thing that starts in less than 60 seconds. Awesome. Well, uh, awesome, but keep in touch, right? I would love to see you guys grow on Clubhouse. And then as you find successes and wins, send those to me. My personal email is dennis at blitzmetrics.com. I want to hear your wins. I want to hear what's working, what's not working. And I want to feature you guys. Love it. Well, I'm going to join you on a chat shortly, my friend. I will be reaching out to you about that. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everyone. You had a good so, time. Yeah, take a take screenshot care. if you found this to be awesome and share that. Put it on Twitter or LinkedIn. Take I one of the it. tips that Dan and I had and share that so other people can learn too. Here, let's do the right. screenshot before you go. All right. <laughs> you thank you, that. Dennis. Thank you, guys. So uh, thank you guys, everyone. We'll be back here next week. I want to encourage you, if you're interested in learning more about uh, what we do at BizHack to help small businesses 
We're going to use this time next week for an info session about the brand new upcoming course we have. Um, so you'll all be getting a link about that and uh, encourage you to apply for uh, our upcoming program. We do have scholarships available. Uh, it's about it's all about a systematic approach to lead generation for small businesses. With that, thank you very much, and we'll see you here in one week.